Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers investigatory detainment, unreliable witnesses, and officer conduct, and is brought to us by Green Valley News' channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. At approximately 6.30 a.m. on August 6, 2019, 22-year-old Freedom Fendler stopped at a Walmart in Sourita, Arizona while on his way to work at a nearby car dealership. Mr. Fendler parked his bike near the entrance and went into the store without removing any of his riding gear, including his helmet. It should also be noted that Mr. Fendler was listening to music through Bluetooth headphones inside his helmet. Shortly after entering the store, Mr. Fendler was briefly approached by one of the managers, but Mr. Fendler fails to acknowledge their presence and continues walking. The manager stalls for a moment, and approximately one minute later he approaches Mr. Fendler from behind, but he is ignored again. Mr. Fendler continued shopping for another 10 minutes, and after checking out and stopping at a bench inside the store to organize his backpack, he was confronted by several officers of the Sour to police department. Hey, bud, you got some ID on you? Hey. Hey. You have some ID on you? Hold on, bud. What's up? You have some ID on you. At this point, the officers have initiated an investigatory detainment, and Mr. Fendler surrenders his identification without question or protest. The legality of wearing a helmet inside Walmart is irrelevant. The real issue at hand is whether the officers have reasonable suspicion to believe that Mr. Fendler is trespassing, and given that the manager who called 911 said that they had asked Mr. Fendler to leave several times, it is likely that the officers would be within their authority to detain and investigate him. As with many states, citizens in Arizona are required to state their name if a police officer suspects them of committing a crime under Arizona Revised Statute 13-2412, and Mr. Fendler would have been required to state his name if he hadn't peacefully surrendered his ID. It is important to note that Mr. Mr. Fendler is detained because this is when his Fourth Amendment protections come into play. The Supreme Court has dedicated many rulings to developing a legal framework that distinguishes between lawful and unlawful arrests. And over the years, the precedent has become more formalized and developed. In the 1968 case of Terry v. Ohio, the Supreme Court noted that, quote, not all personal intercourse between policemen and citizens involves seizures of persons, and that, quote, only when the officer, by means of physical force or show of authority, has in some way restrained the liberty of a citizen, may we conclude that a seizure has occurred. In the decades between the Terry ruling and the 1991 case of Florida versus Bostick, the reasonable suspicion standard underwent many changes and eventually evolved into a reasonable perception approach. In the Bostick case, the court held that the appropriate inquiry to determine whether a citizen has been seized is, quote, whether a reasonable person would feel free to decline the officer's requests or otherwise terminate the encounter. Given that Mr. Fendler was surrounded by officers and was ordered to present his identification and remove his helmet, it is likely that a court would consider him detained and entitled to constitutional protection. See the manager basically walk up right to your face and ask you to take off your helmet? How'd no. you not see that? I, I saw him talking, but he's got a headset I'm on. I'm standing so. right next to you. Right next to you. I came up and I said, sir, I, I thought you were going you this way. I didn't hear I you. I said, stop. I followed you halfway throughout the store. I have discussed the efficacy of eyewitness testimony in a previous episode, which I will link in the info card above, so I won't spend too much time on it in this episode. But... It should be noted that witnesses can be extremely unreliable, and the manager's recollection of events is a testament to that. First, the manager claims that he walked right up 
to Mr. Fendler and implied that Mr. Fendler intentionally ignored him. As you can see from the surveillance footage, the manager makes a subtle gesture at Mr. Fendler, but remains outside of his field of view for the majority of the encounter. It is easy to see how Mr. Fendler may have been unaware that the manager was trying to speak to him, considering that he was wearing headphones and his view was restricted by the helmet. Next, the manager claims that he followed Mr. Fendler halfway through the store telling him to stop, but once again the cameras show that this statement is inaccurate. Although the manager did follow Mr. Fendler across the store, he approached Mr. Fendler from behind the second time and gave up after being ignored again. The manager implied that there was no way Mr. Fendler could have missed him, even with the headphones on, but the camera footage shows that it is entirely possible that Mr. Fendler was unaware of the manager's presence. Without questioning any other witnesses, reviewing any security footage, or getting Mr. Fendler's side of the story, the officers began their questioning by assuming the manager was being truthful. The officers also allowed the manager to interrogate Mr. Fendler in the midst of their investigation, which only added to the escalation of the interaction. Mr. Fendler continues to answer questions, and for a moment it seems as though he may get the opportunity to explain himself. Let me, a let me ask you something. What's the, what's the purpose of keeping the helmet on? It's just faster to get to work, man. Like I said, I'm on my way to work. Where do you work at? Work at Jim Click, right okay. there. Okay. So you walk through the store, what'd you buy? I bought a uh, sandwich, a Gatorade, two peaches, a scrubber, I think four pens, a toothbrush. Okay. That's it. So you just Basically kept everything on here. That's it. I couldn't so find you, a basket. You keep the helmet on, you walk around, yeah, I do that grab all this Safeway, stuff. I go to the other Safeway, I go fries. Except when it's, I go to the bank. I mean, he knows I know because I, I ride. He he rides. Yeah. It's not. It doesn't take much effort. to Take it off. Put it back on. I mean, it takes maybe like five seconds, ten seconds. It if doesn't, that. man. But I've never had any issues where uh -huh. it was like take it off or or a sign saying that you need to have it off. And like I said, that's why the manager away. asked you to take it off. I, like I said, I didn't hear him. I had music playing throughout okay. the show. You didn't see him standing right in front of you. I saw you there, and then I saw you talk. But, uh, like, again, you have a headset on, so well, I, I can't put my hands on you to get your attention. I, I, I was standing right it, next to you. Right? I didn't. Just like I'm standing here with the officer. I didn't see you come next to me. I stood right I in front of you. Just like I'm standing here, I said, I need you to stop and listen to me. You oh, totally right. ignored me and kept walking. Sir, I got I associates that were upset and concerned because you're walking around with a backpack, with a helmet. Nobody knows who you are. Yeah, but I made a purchase. I'm concerned about the safety of my associates. now, okay? You're an argumentative person, and I am not the person you want to argue with. You need to take your hand, and you need to go like this and pull your head out of your head, okay? Because you're walking around in a store hiding your face. There's shooters that go on all over the place. This man comes up to you, and you want to play. You've got a little of Senna headpiece going on that you can't stop. You need to listen to learn, not listen to reply. You need to turn that little switch off in your brain that you want to run your mouth and argue every time somebody tells you something. Because this is disturbing the peace. You can go to jail and not go to work. So what's the choice you're going to make, hardhead? You're going to quit walking around businesses with a helmet on, scaring a lot of people to where you got massive cops all over the place, rifles outside waiting for a shooter to come out? Laugh. Yeah, yeah. But that's where we're at. So pull your head out of your ass and quit arguing every time somebody tells you something. I'm just I'm telling you, look my, at my what part, you're doing. Man. You keep wanting to argue with me. I'm not the guy you want to argue with. I wasn't trying to argue. I'm just that's why you keep talking. Point. Stop talking. Okay, fine. 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 This is Officer John George, and his emotional outburst did nothing to progress the investigative intent in Mr. Fendler's detainment. In fact, it hindered the officer's ability to build a complete contextual narrative around the accusations being put forth by the manager. Not only was Officer George's reprimand unprofessional and uncalled for, but it also violated Mr. Fendler's First Amendment right to free speech. In the 1987 case of Houston v. Hill, the Supreme Court held that citizens have a right to voice their opinions to or near police officers, whether or not they are in the performance of their duties. Mr. Fendler was detained when Officer George ordered him to stop talking, which essentially amounts to a government official depriving a citizen of free speech. There are also implications of Fourth Amendment violations associated with Officer George's conduct as well. In the 1983 Supreme Court case of Florida v. Royer, the court recognized that, quote, the scope of the detention must be carefully tailored to its underlying justification, and that, quote, the investigative methods employed should be the least intrusive means reasonably available to verify or dispel the 
the officer's suspicion in a short period of time. Officer George's behavior served no investigative interest, and Mr. Fendler was forced to listen to and obey the officer because he was being detained. Although unlikely, it is possible that a court could find that Officer George violated Mr. Fendler's Fourth Amendment rights by extending the length of the stop to lecture him and force him to be quiet. Many episodes of ATA have featured interactions where officers extend the duration of a detention to lecture the suspect. And although the Supreme Court has not directly ruled on the constitutionality of this conduct, prior cases indicate that it could arguably be viewed as a Fourth Amendment violation. Whether or not it was a violation of rights, Officer George's tantrum was completely unprofessional and uncalled for. Once Officer George calms down, the manager and the officers continue to question Mr. Fendler, but he decides to remain silent. Do you have, do you have his info? I was going to see if you want to trespass. Yeah, I, I, I do that. want to trespass. I don't want back to the store. Okay, so officially being trespassed from the store, don't come back to Walmart. If you come back to Walmart, manager, anyone sees you, you get arrested for that. Yes, and we don't have a picture of him with a helmet. When he walks out, it'll be on the camera that's, when he walks true. out. Thank you. What's your telephone number? Uh, do I have to provide that? Sir? Yes, you do. Uh, uh, I got to look it up on my phone. And what else is in that pocket? Okay. Now keep in mind, if you come in here again, Jeez, I hate you'll be arrested and you'll book. You book for trespassing. Okay. And understand, what he's telling you, you're trespass from Walmart, it's a national system. You're not just trespassing from this Walmart, it's you're Walmart. trespass from all Walmarts and Sam's Clubs. Okay. Cool. You'll understand that. So if something happens and you get pulled over or stopped at one of them other ones for wearing your helmet for stupid stunts like that, you'll find yourself sitting in county. It didn't have to be like that. So how many other people you see going to business walking around with a motorcycle humming up? Especially with the shootings in Daytona and freaking um, El Paso just happening. Your goal is people different. are going to be on edge. They're going to be scared. They're going to be worried. Okay, you got someone that walks in wearing a motorcycle helmet and has a backpack with military camouflage. They're going to think otherwise. They're not going to think it's just some law abiding says. You can see how that looks. It's like common. Off it's kind of like common sense. I mean, like I said, he rides, I ride. I always take my helmet off. I mean, what does it really save you that much time? Today, it didn't. How old are you? How old are you? Tell me how old you are. Tell me how old you are. Okay, you're acting like a little child. How many times did you ask him to leave? At least five times. Just like, just like he's ignoring you. I walk, I walk half the store with him, following him right to his side to ask him. After I told him many times that you, that officers were coming out. I'm thinking about it, especially with the way he's acting. If he asked him five, six times to leave, call him around the store. I would say so. I'd say we missed the pressure. Why not? So, especially the current behavior. You asked him about all the needs of store? Five or six times. Walk right next to him, just like we're walking right now. Mr. Fendler was arrested, charged with disorderly conduct, and taken to the Pima County Adult Detention Center, where he was detained for 17 hours. Following the encounter, Mr. Fendler's charges were dismissed, and he went on to file a lawsuit claiming that he was illegally searched, falsely arrested, maliciously prosecuted, and publicly defamed by the department. According to the Green Valley News, as of September 1st, 2020, both the town of Sawarita and the Sawarita Police Department deny any wrongdoing and have moved to dismiss the lawsuit. A judge has yet to rule on the the dismissal, and Mr. Fendler's lawsuit is still ongoing. Overall, the Sourita officers get an F for neglecting to conduct a thorough and legitimate investigation, remaining hostile and condescending throughout the interaction, and escalating what could have been a trespass warning into an arrest for disorderly conduct. The officers utterly failed to conduct an investigation into what actually took place, and essentially arrested Mr. Fendler for being quiet after being told to do so. That being said, the societal context of Mr. Fendler's actions cannot be ignored. And although the Walmart managers may have overreacted, their fears were somewhat justified. This interaction took place just days after the El Paso Walmart shooting that claimed the lives of 23 individuals and injured 23 more. So it is somewhat understandable why they would feel uneasy. However, that does not excuse the manager's lying or the conduct of the officers. Condescending lectures are not part of the mission of a police stop. And there is a legitimate argument to be made that officers who extend the length of stops to scold or conversate with suspects are violating their Fourth Amendment rights. 
At the end of the day, this entire happenstance was the result of a miscommunication, and no one's livelihood was threatened by Mr. Fendler's actions. But instead of acting as neutral arbitrators on behalf of the public, the Sourito officers chose to exaggerate the gravity of wearing a helmet inside a store and effectuate a baseless arrest. Nothing that the officers did made their community a safer place, and the fact that the charges were dropped demonstrates that their actions were unfounded. Mr. Fendler gets a B plus, because although he could have exercised his right to remain silent more tactfully, he remained calm and compliant throughout the interaction, made a legitimate attempt to establish a productive dialogue, and followed up this encounter with the proper legal action. Mr. Fendler was outnumbered from the start, and there likely wasn't much that he could say or do to avoid being arrested, especially considering that he wasn't saying anything when the officers decided to arrest him. Mr. Fendler made a genuine effort to dispel the officer's suspicions, but once Officer George finished his condescending tirade, Mr. Fendler shut down, and rightfully so. While Mr. Fendler did eventually decide to remain silent, he neglected to verbally verbally acknowledged that he was invoking his Fifth Amendment right, and the moment he chose to begin his silence could have been more calculated. I commend Mr. Fendler for his ability to maintain his composure throughout this encounter and for following up with the proper legal action. It will be interesting to see the outcome of Mr. Fendler's lawsuit, but it may be some time before a conclusion to this encounter is reached. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more police interaction content.